Catalan officials acted as if they were in organized crime when planning the push for independence. This is what the Spanish police has told the judge overseeing the case against them. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. A report made by Spain's Guardia Civil Police Force argues that phone calls between officials with cryptic language and secret meetings took place in the run-up to the referendum. The paper, handed in to the judge and seen by the Catalan news agency, also implicates an audiovisual business owner who flatly rejected the allegations. In our show today, we'll get you all the latest on this. We'll also speak to Elsa Artadi, the spokeswoman for Puigdemont's candidacy and one of his closest allies. The Spanish Supreme Court is still investigating 28 people over the events leading up to the referendum and the Declaration of Independence. Some of them are accused of rebellion, sedition and misuse of public funds, and four of them are even in pre-trial prison. Yet the latest report by the Spanish police handed to the judge also points to another individual, a Catalan media tycoon. In the paper, the Guardia Civil even compares pro-independence leaders to gangsters. The Spanish Guardia Civil Police report on the run-up to the bid for independence handed in to a judge claims that the leaders aiming to bring about a Catalan state behaved as if they were in organised crime. The report details Catalan officials using cryptic language in phone calls and holding secret meetings. The report seen by the Catalan news agency states that the plans for achieving independence included keeping the public ready to protest. The police also believe that public and private media were key for this goal and they point to one individual, Jaume Rauras. He owns the Media Pro audiovisual business, whose press centre was used by the Catalan government during the referendum. According to the Spanish police force, Rauras was involved in the plans for independence, but he flatly denied the allegations. El, el a la repressió des del CNI fins a la policia van quedar un pèl en ridícul, no? Busquen culpables per justificar, eh, diguem, la seva inoperància. To Rora's surprise, in the report handed to the judge, the Spanish police mentioned a documentary on the October 1st vote produced by MediaPro, seen by a record-breaking 1.1 million viewers when first aired in January. The Guardia Civil also points to jailed Catalan Vice President Uriol Junqueras No. 2, Josep Maria Juve. A diary found in his home allegedly contained a strategy with the steps for attaining independence. The investigation by Spain's Supreme Court was today expanded to cover another branch of the case. In total, 28 Catalan officials are involved, four of which are in pre-trial prison. As the judicial investigation moves forward, Catalan politics remains full of uncertainty. The pro-independence parties continue to hold talks to work out how to swear in a Catalan president. Despite the unionist opposition, their candidate is still Carles Puigdemont. But Spain's challenge to his bid is creating disagreements among the forces in favour of a Catalan state. One of the leading figures of the negotiations to find a solution is Elsa Artadi, the spokeswoman for Puigdemont's candidacy, Junts per Catalunya, and also one of his closest allies. And to go in depth on Puigdemont's party position, we can now speak with Elsa Artadi. Miss Artadi, welcome to Catalan News and thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. First of all, in the election campaign, Mr Puigdemont said he might return to Catalonia to be reinstated, even if he risked going to prison. His candidacy came first in the pro-independence bloc. Is he going to fulfill his commitment? Uh, we actually... Uh, got great results on the 1st December um, and we always said during the campaign that in order for the president to come back we needed him to become president again uh, and we are still not in that stage. Uh, that's what uh, the aim of our parliamentary group is, to have the, the voting in the Catalan parliament and then be sworn as uh, president of Catalonia and uh, we are still in our previous stage. Uh, we were close to it on the 30th uh, January, but the president of the parliament postponed uh, that session and therefore uh, we will have to wait a little bit longer uh, for him uh, to be able to become uh, legally under the Spanish legality to become the president again and then we will see how, how we can uh, uh, keep going uh, but our aim, our wish is that he will be in the, in the government palace uh, ruling as he should be. Your plans to swear in Puigdemont at a distance include amending the Catalan presidency law. Do you really think Spain will let you do that? Uh, correct. That's, uh, we believe that with the current regulations we 
we are able to, to do this already, uh, but the president of the parliament wanted more guarantees, so we've been working on providing these guarantees that go through this amendment of the law. Um, the, the, the job of the, of the parliament is to do laws and amend laws, uh, so we cannot foresee that the constitutional court is going to forbid us for amending a law because that would be as similar as possible to closing the parliament. So we hope that they don't reach the, this level of uh, intervention in the Catalan parliament. And why is your candidacy skeptical about taking Puigdemont's bid to the European Court of Human Rights as suggested by the parliament speaker? No, 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 that's not true. We've been working for weeks, uh, or our legal team, and obviously uh, we have to go through Strasbourg because we think that the European uh, justice is going to be way more just than the Spanish justice and therefore uh, for sure we will be there. Uh, what, we've, what we have criticized is the intervention in our strategy of the, of the, of the president of the parliament uh, without consulting and without agreeing with this, the uh, legal strategy of, the, of President Puigdemont. Some rumors say that you might take Puigdemont's place as president. Are you ready to do that? This is a media bubble that doesn't come from us, obviously doesn't come from me. I'm no substitute for uh, President Puigdemont. Thank you for being with us, Miss Artadi. Thank you so much. While a new president for Catalonia is not sworn in, direct rule of the country from Madrid continues. If this deadlock lasts much longer, it might affect one of the essential pillars of society, the education system. The Spanish president, Mariano Rajoy, met some members of the unionist organization Societat Civil Catalana today. Rajoy revealed to them that his government is considering using direct rule to change the language system in Catalan schools. The goal is to give families the option to choose Spanish as their children's working language at schools. Catalan has been the main language used since the restoration of democracy, and all pupils finish their education fluent in both Catalan and Spanish. Teachers say this system is internationally recognized and ensures social cohesion. And all major parties in Catalonia have historically supported the achievements of this model. Education groups warn that having some schools teaching in Spanish and others in Catalan will segregate children and create two separate communities. Moving on to business news now, and the Port of Barcelona started the year on a high note according to positive figures announced today. The total traffic handled by the maritime facility increased by 54% in January compared to the same month last year. This growth was mostly put down to more transshipments taking place, but exports and other shipments have also risen. In fact, the port handled nearly 200% more natural gas than last year. It also saw a dramatic increase in the number of cruise passengers. In recent years, it's been following a new strategy to attract cruise ships to the city in the winter months when it's usually low season. Let's talk about some great news in the health sector, especially in the fight against cancer. Catalan researchers have taken colon cancer's treatment a step further. They've found out how to treat this kind of cancer and its metastasis with immunology, one of the most effective treatments against some tumors, such as melanomas and lung cancer. With these findings, the first treatment for colon cancer using immunology is just a little bit closer. Catalan researchers have opened the door to a new treatment against colon cancer. The Barcelona Institute for Research in Biomedicine advanced the possibilities of using immunotherapy to treat this kind of cancer. Therapy is aiming at activating the immune system to fight cancer-causing cells are among the most effective treatments, yet colon tumors couldn't be treated with them until now. The researchers' team has found that the hormone TFG beta is responsible for the inaction of the immune system when fighting tumor-causing cells in the colon. The findings show that if the effects of the TFG beta hormone are neutralized, the immune system can recognize the presence of the tumor, fight cancer and even prevent metastasis. The head of the research team said that they were able to reverse the disease even when it was advanced when testing on mice. Despite these positive findings, he warned that diseases are more complex when treating real patients. Sabem que els pacients són molt més complexes que els ratolins, no? Són molt més heterogenis. És possible que el tumor desenvolupi altres mecanismes, és a dir, encara hi ha, crec que hi ha camí per millorar i per treballar en aquesta àrea. Eh, però jo estic, jo estic convençut que hi haurà molts pacients que se'n beneficiaran d'aquesta teràpia. 
between 40 and 50 percent of colon cancer patients suffer relapses of the disease, as well as metastasis in other organs. Yet oncologists are not able to provide effective treatments to patients suffering from advanced forms of the cancer. These findings open a window of hope for many people. Now the next step is clinical testing, which is expected within two or three years. And now let's talk about culture. The third most populated city in the country, Terrassa, will host some of the best jazz music in the world next month. It's been almost 40 years since Terrassa Jazz Festival first took place, and this time round more than 300 musicians will be performing in around 30 concerts in the city. But visitors will not only be able to enjoy live music, exhibitions, cinema, gastronomy routes, as well as contests will also be part of the festivities. The event was presented today at Nova Jazz Cava, one of the places which has traditionally hosted most performances in the past editions of the festival. Terence Blanchard and his band E Collective, Donnie McCaslin and Nena Freelove will be among the top names to watch out for. We've reached the end of our show today. Before going though, we leave you with images of an exhibition of the golden age of Dutch and Flemish painting on display at the Kaiser Forum Centre in Girona. Enjoy it and we'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.